Ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, I'm on the balcony of my penthouse suite here, which can only mean one thing. I'm asking you a favor. We've done quite a bit now to help out Luka Doncic throughout this postseason run. We've iced our knee. We've hammered our knees. I've dressed up as a ref, and you guys have yelled at me. We've done a lot, and it's starting to pay off, and I think we're partially responsible for it. I have to be honest with you, right? Historic moments for Luka Doncic, a game-winning three. The Mavericks are up 2-0 in the Western Conference Finals, but we're far from finished, and I'm starting to question some of you's commitment to the cause, if I'm being completely and totally honest with you, because as you can see, I've I've taken it upon myself, right? I've, I've filled my body up with, as you see right here, Lucas secret stuff. Um, what chemicals are in these? I'm not entirely sure, but every morning I wake up, boom, open it, apply it directly to my right knee. It hurts. It stings badly. It really hurts. And you feel it coursing throughout your legs, but that's what you need to do. And then after I do that, I take this right here. God knows what's in it. Apply it directly to my heart insert it there and immediately you feel it coursing throughout your body I mean, as you can see this is what i need all of you guys to look like okay um and the fact of the matter is i'm just not seeing it so uh, while the mavericks are doing good i think there's a lot more that we can do to send energy through the universe and quite frankly guys if you don't look like this <laughs> then what are you doing you're embarrassing us you're embarrassing all of us okay uh now i asked the doctor if it was okay that I recommend that you guys put this in your body, he said, absolutely not. Do not do that. In fact, you open yourself up for a lawsuit if you do that. So I want to say right now, if you are thinking about suing me for this, head over to Johnson & Johnson Law Firm and use code SLIGHTLY. That'll be 50% off your first lawsuit. 50% off your first lawsuit if you use code What an incredible game we witnessed in game two of this Western Conference Finals. What an incredible finish. What an all-time moment from an all-time great. I was so pumped and amped and excited. Even when I woke up this morning, I still had so much energy. I, I went and I got a great lift in. I mean, as you can probably tell, I just use this energy, channel it through my body, and now my body looks like this. I mean, <laughs> the Mavericks beat the Timberwolves 109 to 108. And of course, we have to talk about Luka Doncic, the shot that he made, how unbelievable he has been in the first two games of the series, really over the last four games of this postseason. This was a guy who early on in this playoff run, it was a little bit dicey, not just like his performance was below expectations for Luka Doncic in the playoffs, because it definitely was, but the knee injury looked so bad that you couldn't help but ask yourself, how far can this Mavericks team go if this is the Luka Doncic that we get? And the way that he's played over the last few games for the Dallas Mavericks, closing out that series against the Thunder and starting this series against the Timberwolves, this is a team that is now two wins away from the NBA Finals, up 2-0, in the Western Conference Finals, heading home, winning two on the road. History will tell you, all the numbers will tell you that this Dallas Mavericks team should make the NBA Finals. They just need to win two of the next f f one, seven, five, four, five games, and they're in. It's over. And of course, it's Luka Doncic at the forefront. We wouldn't want it any other way. Game two, on the road against the Timberwolves, a chance to go up 2-0 in the series. 32 points, 10 rebounds, 13 assists, 16 points, 8 assists, 1 turnover, in the second half of the game, just in complete and total control of everything going on offensively. This these past two games for Luca, statistically not his, you know, not the most eye popping numbers for him. They're still incredible numbers, but just for Luca's standards, not the most eye popping. Again, this is a guy who's second all time in playoff points per game. But going up against a defense this great, a historically good defense, and just completely and totally controlling the game, getting everything that you want, getting to every single spot that you want, making the right reads once you get to those spots, whether that's a lob, whether that's a kick out, whether that's taking a shot, stepping back, whatever the case may be, drawing contact, whatever the case may be, you really cannot emphasize enough how unbelievably good Luka has been in the first two games of the series. And if you go back to the last two games of the Oklahoma City Thunder series, the last four games for Luka, 31 points per game, nine rebounds, 10 and a half assists on 50, 45, 92 shooting. And just think about that. That's a game five on the road against the one seed in a 2-2 series, then a game six closeout at home against the one seed to avoid a game seven. And then going on the road, I guess, again, a historic, a historically great defense at a series that you are not the favorites in, you are the underdogs, and performing like that in the first two games that's that's legend shit. It is. And then the shot against Gobert is an all-time great moment. I was saying this in the stream last night, and I'm going to add my reaction to that shot at the end of this video. Just a, a heads up. It's a little laggy. It's a little all over the place. Playbacks, VODs aren't the greatest. And of course, I can't stream on YouTube because I am banned. <laughs> I'm banned. But I was saying in the stream to soak that moment in. 
because I don't know where Luke is going to end up in all-time rankings, but it's all said and done. But this is an all-time great player, a first ballot Hall of Famer, who just had an iconic all-time moment in the playoffs, a moment that we'll talk about 10, 15, 20 years from now. And you just knew it was going in too. Luka Doncic, in his postseason career, 47% from three in the clutch. Damn near 50% on three-pointers in the clutch in his postseason career. Just absolute insanity. And then, of course, he's talking shit to everybody afterwards. He's talking shit to Gobert. Motherfucker! You can't fucking guard me! I mean, the holding that motherfucker that long is crazy, man. Crazy. And then he, he's telling seven-year-olds in the crowd, go home, bitch. They're seven years old. I don't know if he was actually talking to a seven-year-old. That's just in my, in my head. That's that's my head cannon. I would love for that to be the case. But it's just interesting. This Timberwolves defense is the best in the NBA, right? But it, it just feels like Luka has all the answers for him because he's just holding them hostage, basically. Anything that they do on these pick and rolls, whether it's going to be dropping with Gobert, whether they're blitzing it with Cat, or they're, they're playing up at the screen with Gobert, whatever the case may be, Luka is just picking it apart. When he has Jaden McDaniels on his hip, Jaden McDaniels is just too scrawny. He's just not strong enough. Luca's bumping him off his spot every single time, and he's getting exactly the look that he wants. And then Luca's making the right reads off of this. That's why the Mavericks big so far in the series have been so electric. And in this game, game two, Lively and Gafford combined 30 points on 14 of 16 shooting. Luca had five assists to Daniel Gafford and four to Derek Lively. And it was just winning play after winning play after winning play in this game. Two minutes left, the Mavericks are down one. Luca attacks the attacks the paint, draws the defense in, and just throws a wild kick out pass to Derek Jones Jr., who missed the wide open three. And then Luca just a remarkable offensive rebound tap out perfectly right to Kyrie Irving who then also misses a wide open three. The Mavericks didn't get any points in that possession, but Luka generated two just incredible looks it, with two minutes left in a one-point game. It's just been insane watching this guy play, man. And I've just been, it's given me motivation to better myself. That's why I have the physique that I have now. Uh, I've been trying to help out Luka, inserting steroids into my body, hoping that the universe picks up on those vibes and sends those steroids to him. And I think it's been working. And then this was classic Kyrie Irving. Obviously, in game one, it was the first half where he went off for 24 points. This one, through the first three quarters, Kyrie Irving, three of 11 from the field, seven total points. And in the fourth quarter alone, 13 points, four or five from the field, four or five from deep. And then a huge corner three late in the game when the Mavericks were down five that helped keep them alive and kept them in the game. And this was directly after he had a stretch where he was 0 for 2 at the free throw line. He was 1 of 4 from the free throw line in the fourth quarter. But uh, an empty stretch at the free throw line, a missed wide open three, but he kept the Mavericks in it, made up for it with that huge corner three, and gave the Mavericks a chance to win the game. And he's talking shit too. King of the fucking fourth quarter! That's what it looks like he was yelling. I would love that for that to be the case. Uh, some people said he said Mavericks in four. I really doubt that. I really seriously doubt that. And then again, as has been the case all postseason long, another big story in this game, the Mavericks defense and just how great they were. In game one, over half of the Timberwolves' shots were three-pointers. That was their highest three-point frequency of any game so far this season. You could tell in game two, it, there was more of an emphasis on attacking the rim. 39% of their shots were at the rim in this one. That is a huge number. That's in the 81st percentile of all games. But they went 14 of 27 at the rim. And that's after starting the game four for four at the rim. So the Mavericks' defense... Again, they'll live with you attacking the paint because they know that they're going to have rim protectors, whether that's Daniel Gafford, who had five blocks in this game, whether that's Derek Lively, who just continues to be absolutely phenomenal defensively. And of course, while we're talking about Daniel Lively, we have to mention that defensive play he had at the end there on Anthony Edwards, staying in front of him, not biting on any of the pump fakes that ultimately led to a turnover, which gave the Mavericks a chance to win the game with the Luka Doncic three. We really can't talk enough. Good, there's not enough good things to say about how great Derek Lively's been this postseason. We mentioned it in the video a couple days ago. And while we're talking about Anthony Edwards, 11 of 33 from the field over the first two games of the series, 7 of 19 from 3, 4 of 14 on twos. And this is a problem here. This is a problem. <laughs> the Timberwolves desperately, I mean, their backs are up against the wall now. If they lose game three, this series is over and done with, and their season is done, basically. They need Anthony Edwards to, to channel something here because the Mavericks are... He's playing right into the Mavericks' hands. They're they're closing off driving lanes, and if he does get to the rim, he's meeting he's getting met with bodies and rim protectors. They'll live with Anthony Edwards shooting threes. He's shot him at a pretty good clip so far in this series, but if that's the shot Anthony Edwards is shooting, I think the Mavericks are okay with that, and he's going to have to take these twos. I mean, there was multiple times in, the, in this game where he was just giving up open mid-range jumpers, and the reality is he's just not that good at them. I think he, I saw he's like a 39% shooter on pull-up twos this season. That's not a good number at all. And in that Thunder series, we saw Shea Gildas Alexander have success, but he's a mid-range maestro. Those are the shots that he loves, and the Mavericks were forcing him to take them, but he, he's one of the best to ever do it, if I'm just being frank, at those mid-range jumpers, 
and Anthony Edwards is just not there yet. And he's also just not there yet with his playmaking and his playmaking decisions. And it leads to missed passes, whether not necessarily turnovers, but just missed reads where guys are open in the corner or guys are open uh, cutting to the, towards the rim. And Anthony Edwards just doesn't see him or just can't get the pass off. And bad turnovers. And that turnover down the stretch was just brutal. He had, uh, I thought, a bad pass to Jaden McDaniels. And the Timberwolves got fucked of one of those classic plays where Kyrie fouls Jaden McDaniels. The refs call it out of bounds off of uh, the Mavericks. They review it. The Mavericks didn't touch the ball because Kyrie Irving touched Jaden McDaniel's arm. And, you know, the, the Timberwolves definitely got fucked there. I feel bad, except not really because it's the playoffs and I don't apologize for anything. But Jaden McDaniels was put in a rough spot there uh, by, by Anthony Edwards. So, you know, it's uh, – he needs to be better. And so does Carl Anthony Towns, who's 10 of 36 so far in the series. So those two have been really, really rough. They're shooting barely above 30% combined from the field as a tandem. And uh, they're going to have to figure it out, man. Cat is for sure going to have to be better. He was benched down the stretch of this game for Nas Reed because this fucking guy does not miss against the Dallas Mavericks. If we go back to the regular season in these two games to start this series, he is 24 of 40 from three against Dallas. That's 60% from three. 60 in six games. 24 for 40. He was seven for nine from three in game two. He's 10 of 15 so far in the series. And my God, that last shot... Going back and rewatching it, I didn't realize how close that was to going in. Like that thing was that thing was in and out almost. I thought that he missed it more in live, but I just want to shout out Derek Jones Jr. because I thought that was a tremendous play defensively in that last one, uh, stunting in the gaps on Anthony Edwards, forcing that pass out, and then recovering and contesting that shot the best that you possibly can. That was a great job by him. Uh, but my God, he hasn't missed so far from three. Very interested to see how the rest of this series plays out because both games have been incredibly close. I picked the Mavericks in seven. At the start of this series, I, I figured that every single game in the series would go down to the wire. Both these defenses are so good that I just can't imagine a blowout. And I want to give the Mavericks some credit because they were down 18 points in this game in the first half. And th I mean, this team is just so resilient. It's unbelievable how resilient this Dallas Mavericks basketball team is. And this Timberwolves team has been resilient all year too. And they have to win game three on the road or else their season is over. And I'm interested to see how this goes because you can look at it from the Timberwolves perspective and say, all right, well, we get a few bounces, go our way. We make a few plays down the stretch that we feel like we could have made. And we could be up 2-0 in the series with a chance to close this thing out on the road. Instead, we're down 2-0 with now our backs up against the wall. Obviously, you need Anthony Edwards to get going. You need Carl Anthony Towns to get going. But if you're the Mavericks, I think you could look at this and say, hey, you know what? We really haven't shot that well from three. P.J. Washington has not shot well from three so far this series. We know that he can get hot in a moment's notice. Derek Jones Jr. hasn't really shot well from three so far in this series. Like, none of our role guys are hitting threes currently. And you just feel like you have more answers for what the Timberwolves will throw at you than what the Timberwolves have for what you will throw at them. That's why I picked the Mavericks against the Thunder, because I thought the Mavericks would have more answers than the Thunder, and they did. I thought this was kind of a coin toss. And so far through two games, the Mavericks have more answers than the Timberwolves do. We'll see. Game three, I, I could see a world where the Timberwolves come out with a punch, the Mavericks absorb it, punch back, and the Timberwolves are just kind of like, what the fuck just happened here? We, we, we Five days ago, we were on top of the world, and everyone was talking about Anthony Edwards like the next Michael Jordan, and we just beat the defending champions in a game seven on the road, and people are talking about us being the favorites in the NBA Finals, and now we're, we're down 15 points in the second quarter when our season's on the line. Like, we're about to go down 3-0 in this series. I'll be interested to see how this plays out. Uh, I, I don't expect that to happen at all. I think the Timberwolves are going to come out guns a-blazing. They are a very resilient team. They're, they're tough. They're young. They don't give a shit about anything at all. And uh, this Mavericks team is also very resilient. So I expect Game 3 to be yet another bloodbath in this one with heart palpitations uh, mixed into the equation. This is what dedication looks like, ladies and gentlemen. You guys know nothing about it. You don't know anything about it. This is what I need to see all of you looking like moving forward. You understand what I'm saying to you? You get what I'm saying to you? We get it into Luca. Here we go. Robert switched on to Luca. Luca. Three. Boom! Boom! Luca Doncic! Boom! Come on, baby! And gets it. Nas Reed misses! The Mavs win game two! Oh my god! What a win! Yeah! Look at Luca! Yeah! Yes! You just witnessed an all-time great have an all-time moment. I have to decompress. Go home, bitch. That's what Luca said. Oh my god. He's a motherfucker, man. That's the type of shit I love. That's why, guys, that's why we hold him 
to the standards because he is the fucking best. Whatever I say, I'm not, I'm not shitting on, like, I, I'm not even addressing it. That's why I hold him to those standards because he's the fucking best, man. He's the best. He is the best in the fucking world. He is. He is the best player in the league. He just is. He's the best the league has to offer. No one does the shit he does, man. He's the biggest fucking killer in the league. They don't know that. They let last year get to their head. They let last year get to their head. They don't remember all the shit this fucking guy's done already, man. He's a, he's a killer. He's a murderer. He rips your soul out. He spits on you. He does it in your building, and then he talks shit to you, and he tells you to go home, bitch. Get out. Get out. I'm him. I am him. I'm the best in the world. I'm a killer. Ten seconds left. I don't care. I'm taking that shot. I'm making it. I, it doesn't matter to me. That's what I do. Uh, most people don't. There's only a handful of those guys. There's only a small amount of them. And he does it. It doesn't matter to him. It's what he does.